Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can perform some high impact photo processing in Lightroom. Before we start this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is the image as it came out of the camera and just cropped. And we're looking at processing this image with a lot more impact than we're getting in the original. And this is the sort of effect that we're looking for, something that has a sort of glow to it and something that is way more visually interesting. So let's get started. To get started with this image, this is the version that came straight out of the camera and the only thing that I've done with it so far is rotated it so that it is straight. But basically the rest of this is straight out of the camera. To begin the processing, I'll start in the basic panel and I'll always want to do a white balance adjustment on the image and I'm looking for something that would be black or white or a neutral grey and I'm thinking that somewhere around here I'm going to find a sort of neutral grey point or something that aesthetically pleases me. Now I'm actually going to probably adjust it to this rooftop here which I think is probably a bit of a bluey grey and that's giving this a little bit of a pinky light suggesting that it might have been shot late in the day or early in the morning and I'm kind of liking that look. I'm going to adjust the exposure because this image is slightly underexposed. So I'm going to walk the exposure up to a better range in the image. And for this right now, I'm going to back off contrast because I want to get a sort of grainy look to this image and really get some high impact out of the image. And to do that, I'm going to start by backing off my contrast. I'm also going to drop down my highlights because that then flattens the highlights a little bit and gives me a bit more detail to play with later on. And ditto with the whites, I'm going to back off the whites a little bit. But I am also at the same time going to open up the shadows by increasing the shadow slider a bit. Now there's not a lot of shadow in this image so I don't want to take that up too far. And with the blacks typically I would open those up a little bit too but this image has so precious little blacks in it that I'm probably just going to leave that slider where it is. I'm going to increase clarity because that's going to give me some adjustment through the mid-tones of the image and I'm also going to increase vibrance just to give it a little bit more of a colour boost. Now having adjusted in the basic panel I might go back and have a look at some of these settings and just say that once I've made it to the bottom of the basic panel that these are still valid settings. And I think I'm going to back off my highlights just a little bit there but I'm just rechecking things as I go through. And then I'll go to the tone curve. So I'll open up the tone curve because this allows me to adjust the tonal range in the image. And by default I get a linear curve which is a one-to-one -one relationship on this curve. In other words, there is no adjustment at all. I'm going to drop this down and have a look and see what medium contrast does. Well, it's starting to actually do something nice to this image. So let's go and see what strong contrast is going to do. Well, that's making it crunchier too. The strong contrast curve operates by lightening the light areas in the image. This curve is dragged up a little bit here and then it darkens the darker areas by dragging down on the curve. And because the middle of the curve here is then steeper, we're seeing a bit more mid-tone contrast. And we've got a lot of detail here in the light to mid-tone areas of the image that we would actually like to see. So I'm going to leave this as just a standard strong contrast curve. Now once I've got the image to this stage of fixing, I'm looking now at what I want to do with the image to finish it off. And what I'm interested in here is the lion himself, but there's also a bit of detail in the sky that I may want to recover. So I'm going to try and draw attention to the lion here, but also build perhaps a little bit of detail or interest back in the sky. To do this, I'm going to use the graduated filter. So I'm going to target the graduated filter this allows me to make a fix that is applied over the top of whatever fix I have underneath. And for this fix I want it to affect the entire image so I'm just going to click and drag here to the right. And what that does is it starts a fix that begins over on the very left of the image. So it begins over here and it starts dissipating here well beyond the right hand edge. 
So effectively, it's just affecting the entire image. Now I could have come from the left, I could have gone over here to draw it, or here, or above it, or below it, doesn't really matter. I just chose to do it this way. And now I can adjust the entire image again, adding an adjustment over the top of the previous one. I'm going to drop the exposure down a little bit because I want to get some detail out of this sky here. And I'm going to increase contrast too because that's an area of the image where there is need of some contrast. I might also at this point perhaps increase the highlight just to get a little bit of extra lightness in those highlight areas and perhaps drop down a little bit the shadow areas except that that's not really helping me very much so I'm probably just going to take that setting back up. I'll have a look at clarity, a little bit of extra clarity is helping me build up those skies and I can also add a bit of saturation too to get the blue sky contrast with the white clouds and I can work in around this adjustment to just perfect it for what I want and at this stage I'm ignoring the lion. Once I've got the adjustment roughly where I want it, I can come back and edit it if I want to. I'm just going to click done. And now I'm going to focus on the lion and for the lion because I need to isolate him I'm going to use the adjustment brush. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush and click on the lion. Now I have my mask overlay visible so that I can see what I'm doing and I'm also using auto mask because the edge where the lion intersects with the background of this image I've got a fairly clean edge and by using auto mask I can make this selection a lot easier to make. So I'm just dragging over the line, just making sure that the plus symbol here is staying well within the inside of this statue. Because that will ensure that I only select the areas that I actually want to select and that the masking is going to make this selection just so much easier than it would otherwise be. So I'm just looking at drawing over the entire lion and not too much of anything else if I can help it. I can adjust the size of my brush down when I get closer to his feet so that I again I don't select anything that I particularly don't want to select. So let's just go into this area, just pick up his feet. I don't want the top cement that he's standing on so I want to avoid selecting that. If I do go over a little bit I'm not going to lose any sleep over that because it's really easy to go back and to remove areas from this selection. I'm just going to make sure that I get the very edges here because there's some really dark pixels there that we may want to affect and I don't want to leave those behind. So I'm just going to make sure that I really do have a very very good selection here. And then to go back and deselect any of the areas that I might have selected by mistake, I'm going to get the eraser, going to make sure it's a really small brush and I do that using the square bracket keys, the same as you would do in Photoshop or you could use the size slider, I just find it easier to use the square bracket keys. I'm going to make sure that I remove any of this red mask that is where it should not be and I can switch back to brush A and just finally fine tune any of the areas in this mask that I may not have correct. Of course this is a mask and so it's easy to come back later on if you find that it bleeds into an area that you didn't expect it was bleeding into, you missed a place, then you can always come back and perfect this mask later on. But I'm trying to get mine as good as I can before I start. So now I'm going to turn off the mask overlay. All of these settings are at zero and I'm going to start adjusting them. Because this is the lion alone, any of the adjustments I make are only going to affect the lion. So I'm going to increase the exposure but I don't want it to be quite as contrasty as it is so I'm actually going to back off on contrast. I'm going to look at my highlights and say well do I want to increase my highlights or decrease them. I think I want to increase them a little bit and perhaps even a little bit of increase in the shadows to make him a little bit lighter because I have an idea as to what I'm going to do in a minute. and. 
I might just add a little bit of clarity adjustment here. I'm just tossing up here as to whether I go in a negative direction to soften it a little bit or whether I go in a positive direction just for the effect that I'm looking at. I think I'm actually going to just zero that out for the moment and I could add a little bit of saturation if I wanted to but because the line is a sort of starting to be yellowy sort of color I'm actually going to enhance that so I'm going to click on color here and I'm going to go and pick up a very slight orange color an orangey pink the kind of color that you might get if he was being caught by the sunlight at sunset or very very early in the morning so I'm just going to target that color it's just the very faintest little bit of color into the lion and then I can click done if I'm happy with that and of course because this is Lightroom and because these are filters we can go back and adjust them so we can go and pick up our graduated filter at any time I'm clicking the graduated filter I have show edit pins turned on to always which means that any time that the graduated filter is selected these pins are going to show up so here's my pin for this filter that I applied to try and bring in some detail in the sky and if I want to adjust that I can do so what I'm actually going to do is try to kick up the shadows a little bit because what I've discovered is that these leaves are a little bit in the shadow area and it might be interesting to bring those up in doing so in increasing the shadows on this bottom layer I'm also lightening the line so I may want to come back and make another adjustment on him but I am just interested in these areas here so I'm just going to click done and then let's go back and get the adjustment brush let's go and reselect the line here and then say okay well what did we lose in fixing the adjustment underneath well we got him a little bit lighter than perhaps we wanted him so let's bring him down a little bit let's bring the exposure down a little bit and then let's have a look at contrast here and just see what we want to do with that and then click done so by creating a basic adjustment on the image and then looking critically at the image and saying well what is it exactly that I want to achieve we're able to sort of craft the image to look the way we want it to look now there's a further adjustment possible here by just taking in the head of the lion and let's see how we might do that again with the adjustment brush I'm going to pin this to the face of the lion going to increase the brush size and let's just go and show the mask overlay for this so we can see what we're picking up so this time I'm only interested in this sort of neck and head of the lion because it is a separate piece of the statuary it's got a different texture to it if you like than the rest of the statue and so instead of taking the whole statue now I'm actually going to isolate my selection to just this area and try and get a good selection where it ends and where the rest of the statue begins so again I'm going to go into the eraser tool here and just finally erase in these areas and when I've done that I'm going to deselect to show selected mask overlay and now this area of the image can be adjusted in isolation to the rest so if we felt that the lion's head was just a little bit dark beforehand by adding the tiniest little bit of exposure we're actually able to get a little bit of a lightening in that area and perhaps we may want a little bit of extra contrast in that area as well and let's click done and now if you want to see what this effect was let's just go in here and let's target the history and here's the second set of brush strokes so at this point we had the selection made but we hadn't made any change to the image itself and here are our contrast and exposure adjustments now they're fairly subtle but they really are having an improving effect on the image they're lightening and brightening the lion's head and really drawing attention to the statue now the only thing I might do at this stage just to finish the image off is I may apply a vignette and I would do that through the effects menu 
and I'm going to choose a post crop vignette and it's going to be highlight priority and I'm going to drag just a little bit to the left and what that's doing is slightly darkening the edges of the image and probably at about minus 7 to minus 15 somewhere in there is the best place for this particular vignette and it's a post crop vignette so it's operating on the cropped image not the image as it was out of the camera. And there we have some high impact processing of our image. This is the image as it was before out of the camera. The sky is light, the lion is dark. And now we've reversed this and added some lightning effect and we've got an image that would be suitable for printing or even for production in a calendar. It's an image that is a lot more visually exciting. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this YouTube video tutorial. Look out for more of my tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.